no, I don't know why I'm snapping. I'm not using a microphone for this. This is an impromptu video. And I mean so impromptu that I spent five minutes looking for my mini tripod to set up. Could not find it and settled on a jar of coconut oil hair gel instead. So if the framing seems off, um, that is why. This is a bit impromptu because I decided maybe 30 minutes ago that I wanted to talk about events that have been happening in the world and what I personally have been thinking about in terms of my own experiences as an Asian American person. In case you are behind on the news, um, last week in Georgia, uh, eight people were murdered at various uh, Asian-owned spas. Uh, six of the people who were murdered were Asian women specifically. That event has caused an upsurge in um, Stop Asian Hate and stuff like that. Ugh, I'm so bad at talking. God, I wanted to offer a bit of my experience as an Asian American. Like, one in a hopes that maybe someone else will resonate with some of the things that I'm saying and feel less alone in it and to bring awareness to my non-Asian friends about our experience and some of the things that really do happen. So let's start. <laughs> and a lot of this is going to be, you know, kind of like free balling because like I said before, I did not plan this. The thing that I was thinking about a lot today that sort of incited this whole thing was an incident uh, two years ago now where I was a tour guide for my college and I was giving a tour to a group around the campus and one of the parents asked a completely normal question that was something along the lines of um, what are you doing after graduation and I went through my normal spiel of you know oh you know I'm gonna stay in the area for a while build up my resume <laughs> which considering the pandemic is a bit sad but then this parent asked uh, about the rest of my family and if they were still back in China and I just simply retorted I was, I was like no they're back in Texas and that kind of made the group dynamic awkward for a few seconds and then I saved it afterwards and after I came back and said goodbye to the tour group I went back into the tour guide office and I told everybody there about what had happened and they all like you know they sympathized with me in that moment and I tweeted about it <laughs> I made a tweet about it at the time that was very simple, very meme-like but um, and I said at the time that I didn't have the words and I couldn't even begin to explain everything wrong with that incident and I think I can start to explain that it's xenophobic in assuming that I was a foreigner and that I didn't belong here and that I was just visiting even though I am an American born citizen and I've lived here my whole life I don't know just the assumption of my ethnicity and the assumption that all Asian people are part of a monolith I feel like I still don't have the words for it <laughs> My freshman year of college, I was auditioning for a lot of shows and I was beginning to feel discouraged because I spent that entire year auditioning for literally almost every single show and still not getting cast whether that was my talent or something else entirely I won't get into it. I remember auditioning for a show and a friend of mine was on the stage management team for it so they got to get the inside scoop so to say and I auditioned and I didn't get called back and I was fine with it, okay with it but then my friend told me that um, after the auditions that they would have been interested in seeing me for a specific role in that play but what the director said allegedly was that the play was set in 19... 1960s New York and Asians were not there in 1960s New York which is obviously not true <laughs> um, we've been here we've always been here for quite some time and especially in New York one of the most diverse cities I think that was the first instance where it became clear that that my appearance as an Asian American would affect the roles that I would be cast in you know and I think I think that's very obvious when you look at the tropes that a lot of Asian American actors are put into as like, you know, the best friend, um, the foreigner, the over-sexualized foreigner. There's a ton of videos that express this better than I can. Um, if I could find them, I'll 
link them below. When I was a kid, I remember kids would pull back their eyes to, and tell me that they looked like me. I have a very distinct memory of walking in the hallways of my elementary school and someone whispering China doll in my ear as I walked past. Uh, to this day, I don't know who that kid was, but it sticks in my brain as the first time that I was really aware of being Asian. I didn't learn Vietnamese growing up, and years later when I asked my parents why, they told me that it was because they wanted me to be more American, or to pass as more American. And I'm starting to realize that they had good intentions, but it ultimately doesn't matter because despite me being as American as one could be, people are going to look at me and still assume that I don't belong here. I didn't expect to get emotional. <laughs> um, <laughs> I did very, I had very good grades in high school. You know, I was top of the class, all A's, you know, all that jazz. And a lot of times I was told that it was because I was Asian and it felt very belittling to have my hard work taken down to just being accredited to my race. You know, they, they didn't see the hard work that went in behind the scenes to make it happen. They just saw a successful Asian American person. I feel very fortunate to have not been attacked or harassed or involved in any way like that yet in my life, but I know that it's going to happen eventually and I don't know if I'll ever be prepared for that. I am nervous for my parents, I'm nervous for my family who live in Texas and while the people around them are very nice and kind, I'm worried that there will be someone else who is not from that area who isn't, such as with the attacker in Georgia. Um, if you don't know this about me, a lot of my family either own or work in a nail salon. And I think about Think about how scary it is, really. My parents were my parents were the first in my family to arrive here in America. And I think about the things that they went through and the sacrifices that they made and the hard work that they put in to have everything that they have now. And I I feel like they're the perfect model of of what the American dream should be. And I fear that some, some asshole is going to go, it's not going to see that, you know, they're just going to see some Asian person who probably brought in the virus or whatever. I don't like thinking about that, especially since a lot of my family is elderly. Uh, I'm crying now. God, I hate that. Other things, other things. I remember in high school, I wanted to learn about the Vietnam War and other Asian American events in history so passionately because I wanted to learn about who I was and where I came from, you know, because my, my parents didn't talk much about it. And so the only way I could really learn about it was in school at the time because I didn't know about other resources. The history books in high school, we got... A section in a chapter in one textbook. My history teacher made a PowerPoint presentation because I requested it, but it wasn't really talked about. It was just a small subsection in the grand scheme of US history. My high school theater teacher would often choose plays for us to do that had an Asian character in it and I was usually cast in those roles. And it always made me wonder if I got that role because I earned it and I deserved it, or if it was really just because our school was diverse 
and I just happen to fill in the perfect slot for that play. I still think about that a lot, actually, in roles that I'm cast in. Was it something that I earned, or was it just because I'm Asian and you needed someone to fill in that Asian slot? I'm gonna run out of recording time soon, I'm checking the clock. I'm going to leave a couple of resources where you can learn and where you can donate. In other, in other news, I recently won a uh, mystery solving competition, so I got a, just under $100 from that, and I will be donating it to the GoFundMe for, um, I think it's gofundme.com slash AAPI or something like that. Um, I will be donating it there. If you have the money to do so as well, I would recommend you do it. Eugene from the Try Guys made a wonderful hour-long documentary about the history of Asian American persecution. Um, that's also a wonderful watch. I also encourage you to talk about it, not just online, but also with your friends and especially with your family. Next video will probably be either, either the channel trailer I keep talking about for months on end or a continuation of the Broadway musical rankings. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you later. Okay, bye.